So the Windows 11 dev build has been available to download if you're part of the Windows Insider program, and there's tons of videos you can watch on it, but I wanted to do it from a laptop perspective because I feel like most of you watching my channel are probably using laptops. Now I've had it installed for the past few days and so far I've been really impressed. In fact, this build is so stable that I feel like by the time we get to November, we're gonna be super happy when we upgrade our computers. Now the overall theme, as Microsoft says, is a glass design, very transparent layers. It looks beautiful. To me, it reminds me of a smartphone OS being combined with elements from Mac OS. Now this is not a bad thing. You know, I think the two together offer its own unique experience. And like, as soon as you load into Windows 11, you're presented with a taskbar that looks slightly different. As you're used to on Windows 10 and before, all the stuff used to be on the left-hand side, but they moved it to the middle. And I think this makes a lot more sense. Your eyes naturally gravitate towards the middle of the screen and being able to access your favorite stuff on the bottom is obviously preferred. Now, I just wanna show you the lock screen quickly before we continue because it does look a bit different. Like all the stuff you see on the middle used to be on the left-hand side for the Windows 10 screen, but now it's centered right in front of your face. You can also see the font is slightly cleaner and chunkier compared to the previous version. Now, the Windows button will take you to this, okay? And I've already put this computer in dark mode because that's my preferred color space. But as soon as you click on that Windows logo, you're presented with pinned apps. These apps are there that you can set for yourself, or these are the ones that are defaultly pinned the first time you install Windows. Below that is the recommendations, the stuff that you use the most, right? Like if you're constantly using Microsoft Edge or Discord, you're gonna see it under your recommended settings. Now, if you wanna access all the apps, it's very simple. You just click on the all apps button and then you get that traditional list of apps that you're used to seeing before. The next thing is search. And this is probably what I use the most because I don't wanna like look through all my apps to find the one I'm using. I'll just click the search button. You don't see any sign of Cortana, thank God. And you can type in the app that you're trying to look for. So let's say I'm looking for OBS, which is running this screen recording right now. I can type it in. That's the first suggestion I get because it's one of the apps that I have installed. Now let's say you don't have the app and you type it in, it's gonna give you suggestions in other places. So for example, I don't have Discord installed right now. So I can type in Discord and it's gonna give me web results. But if I click on apps, it's gonna suggest that I look at the Windows Store. Now I wanna take you to the Windows Store because this is one area they're completely changing. And right off the bat, it does look a bit different compared to the Windows 10 version, but it's nicer, right? And, and as time goes on, you're gonna get all the applications that you're used to going to search for on the net yourself directly in the Windows Store because Microsoft is opening it up to everybody. So right off the bat, like if I look for Zoom, right? It's already here, okay? They've already included their Zoom app on the Windows Store, which was never there a week ago and Adobe Creative Cloud, you can download from here eventually. I was able to download OBS from the Windows Store, which you couldn't do before. And this list of apps is just gonna continuously grow. Now this is good, because if you ever reinstall your computer, you can see the apps that you downloaded and reinstall them right away. You don't have to go to each individual website manually to do that yourself. Now the apps store is basically what I was just talking about, right? Like the accumulation of Windows apps from where you used to search into one direct location. The other thing you're gonna find here is Android apps. Unfortunately, it's not activated in this dev build. I'm sure it'll come out at a later date, but you'll be able to download Android apps from the Amazon App Store. Now, I know some of you are saying, but Matt, the Amazon App Store is mostly Amazon apps and a few more popular ones, but think about it, right? Like if Amazon's App Store is the front and center location to download your Android apps, I bet you developers are also gonna start putting their apps on there too, because it's gonna be more accessible by Windows users. Entertainment's there, so you can watch content. And then of course you have gaming, which is like Microsoft's Xbox, Game Pass. Like this is where you'll go when you want to live stream your games directly in Windows. File Explorer got some changes, nothing major, just a few things to tweak it, make it more accessible. They got rid of that ribbon bar at the top of it and it's more of like a command structure. 
and it, it's better, but there's nothing really to bag about. Like they changed some of the colors and, and icons of the stuff you're used to seeing like downloads and desktop. But for the most part, it's pretty much the exact same file explorer. I will say this though, I do love the rounded edges of the file explorer. Like I think it looks cleaner and more minimalistic than the squares that they were using in the past. And there's this new feature called snap grid or snap to grid, which is what you'd usually do when you hit the windows key and an arrow button, it will move the pane you're looking at either to the left side or maybe to the top if you want it snap to the top. But if you hover your mouse over the maximize button, it will give you different options. And I think this is like one of the best things about Windows management that no other operating system is doing as well. Like you do try to do this on the iPad, it's a nightmare, right? You gotta flick your finger around everywhere, pick your nose, it's terrible. This, you just follow the, the suggestions and you can snap these windows quite easily. But the system tray is so much better. Okay, right now you see a little blue microphone at the bottom right hand corner. This is letting me know the user that my microphone is being used and it's being used by OBS because it's recording my voice for scratch audio. When this goes away, that means the microphone is no longer being used. Now, when you click on the up arrow here, it's still the same as Windows 10. It gives you some of the stuff that's currently running in the background. You have access to your OneDrive account, uh, your Wi-Fi menu it, it, it is different, right? Like it's combined now with your volume, your brightness, and a few other quick setting features that you'd find like on the top of like a Android phone, which I think just looks better and makes your life so much easier. So if I wanna to get to my Wi-Fi networks now, I just click on the little arrow, and then of course it's gonna do a scan and give me other suggestions. Like do you guys remember the volume in Windows 10 where it shows up on the top left-hand corner? That was ugly. This just makes more sense. Now battery, okay, and I think this is probably gonna be a big topic for Windows users, is different. On Windows 10, when you right click on the battery, you can change it to like power saver, best battery mode, or performance mode, whatever you want. The new one doesn't let you do that, right? Like you have the options to go into your power and sleep settings, or go to battery saver settings. Even if I unplug the power button, there's no way right off the cusp in your system tray to select that performance mode. I will say this, when you do click on the, the battery settings and you go into your settings menu for Windows, everything looks so much better. Like this new screen looks awesome. It tells you your battery levels. It tells you how long you've used your battery when you were just uh, off of charge, which is great to know to figure out how long your, your battery's lasting throughout the entire day. And then there's a power function that will, will give you ways to customize your battery experience when you want the screen to turn off, when you want your, your, your computer to enter power saving mode that you can customize like you could before, just it's a lot more accessible. Now, the battery use stash is probably one of my favorite things because like you can click on it and really take a look at the battery levels, kind of like you would on an Android phone. I can see the screen on time. I can see the screen off time. I can see exactly what programs are using my battery. So if Chrome, which is usually a culprit for a lot of people, is completely killing your battery, you'll know right here and you can get rid of it and install a different browser. But since we're in the, the system settings, just look how nice it looks, right? Like again, reminds me of an Android phone. I click on Bluetooth and devices, I can quickly add a device and I have all the different settings that are associated with Bluetooth. Now, there is some ugliness behind all of this, okay? Like, if I click on the search bar, for example, then, you know, I can still access the control panel, like the old school way, like you would back in Windows 8. It's still there, okay? And I think a lot of that older stuff is still in the background hiding. It's there if you need it, and every once in a while when you're doing something, it shows itself. And I think this is something that's always going to stick with Microsoft because they have so many legacy apps they need to support. There are so many IT administrators that need to get into the nitty gritty of the settings and they have to use this old school way of doing it. Another thing, the system tray, the notification center, nice little update. It's no longer like one vertical pane. It's like bubbles now, you know, like you have different sections. So for example, it shows me my calendar. It shows me 
uh, what I was just looking at on the Microsoft store, uh, my mail, for example, I have a new mail from Amazon Business Canada. It's just a cleaner looking notification center. And then of course, if you go into the actual notification settings in your settings menu, then you can use focus assist, right? This is what Apple was including with the latest version of the iPhone, which lets you set times to be disturbed, set times to be not disturbed. Now widgets, there's two ways to access it. You can use touch, which is with your finger and swipe to the right and you'll get presented with all of your widgets. It looks great. I love this glass pane. I think it looks super duper clean. There's not a lot of widgets to choose from right now. It's mostly Microsoft stuff. So for example, I have all the standard stuff that you saw before, like your calendar and to-do list, but you can't like drag these widgets anywhere else. Like I can't bring these widgets onto the actual desktop. They have to stay in this widgets pane. I don't know, as long as the news is good and I can configure where my stories are coming from, then I'm happy with this. I think this looks super clean and I expect at some point, like third party manufacturers are gonna add their own widgets to this store. I will say this, touch is so much better, so much better. Even though the little icons are tiny when you press your finger on it, they still make it easier to press. So for example, I have this file explorer open, right? And the X is a little bit bigger than before, but when you put your finger on the screen, a little circle appears and the circumference of that circle kind of goes around the X and allows you to push it significantly easier compared to the old way of doing it. As for gaming, I was expecting a huge performance hit because this is a new operating system, but wow, it's the same. Like I didn't feel any difference in terms of gaming compared to Windows 10. I just quickly played some Overwatch on this laptop, which is not like the best experience on a Surface Laptop 4, but I got exactly the same frame rates. So I'm not expecting uh, gaming to be an issue on these early dev builds. The last thing I wanna show you is the color theming. And if you go under personalization, you have already a ton of pre-installed Windows themes that you can choose from. First and foremost, I really love these wallpapers that Microsoft is using. I think they look awesome but if you don't like it they have some other themes you can choose from you can stick with light mode like i have here but i'm more of a dark mode person so i'm going to choose this dark mode with a blue palette this blue palette will be synonymous throughout the operating experience for example you can see here uh, on the bottom layer on the bottom taskbar the flower kind of shining through it through that transparent theme that microsoft is using and even like little things like gray highlights are, are present now inside of your Windows experience. Now you can turn all of this off and just use the basic stuff like you could. You could even turn off the, the transparent layer if you don't like seeing those visual window effects happen while you're using this computer. So that wraps up my first experience with Windows 11 on laptops. I think it's gonna be great for laptop users out there. Just note that there are some minimum requirements that have to be met if you want to install Windows 11 on your laptop. Like for example, you need like an eighth gen Intel processor or a, a 2000 series and above AMD processor, as long as it has like a TPM chip installed, if you want to use Windows 11. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.